KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Pacific Points, Do More, Get More, and Calvo Enterprises, Inc. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. Hop it in, welcome to another episode of The Hub. This week, Nestor Lacanto interviews the incoming Attorney General, returning to that seat, is Doug Moylan. Now sit back and enjoy, and here's Nestor with this week's episode. Hi everyone, and welcome to The Hub. I'm Nestor Lecanto. Thanks for joining us. This week, our guest is the Attorney General-elect Douglas Moylan, who was recently certified by the Guam Election Commission as our next AG. But during a somewhat contentious campaign uh, over two rivals, he won the vote, he won the election, rather, by just the thinnest of margins, 39 votes. It was the closest ever race for Attorney General, albeit in Guam's relatively short history of electing an AG. And it was made even closer because of the post-primary addition of write-in candidate Attorney Peter Santos. Throughout the campaign, there was plenty of finger-pointing about perceived weaknesses in Guam's top legal office, both past and present. I remain the toughest Attorney General on Guam. Guam is on its way to falling apart. It doesn't need to be this way. The last four years of this Attorney General's policies have not worked. While he was Attorney General, Governor Camacho had to declare a state of emergency at the AG's office. He wants you to forget that he lost half of his staff, so much so that they were dismissing cases because they didn't have sufficient resources. I agree with both Doug Moylan and Levin Camacho that each other should not be the next Attorney General. So go ahead and just write me in. If you don't want a repeat of this, then don't, don't uh, vote Levin or Doug. But the top concern among voters was the ICE epidemic, a crisis dating back to the early 1990s that continues to be blamed for the growing cycle of crime and violence plaguing the community. Drugs are a key part of Guam's problems. Meth addiction is killing everybody, literally. Whether you're the meth addict, the child of a meth addict, the wife or husband of a meth addict, or the friend or family member. Therapy isn't going to help people stop taking drugs. You need to take them before the judge and face that abyss so that they want to help themselves. Now, where I really differ from Mr. Moreland in particular, I believe in treatment. The evidence shows that treatment works. Drug addicts aren't animals. The best way to solve crime is to prevent it from happening. So how do we do that? We invest in our community, economic, economically. We are investing in interdiction. We have partnered with Customs to have more canine units. There were over 76 pounds of meth that were intercepted, seized by canines this year alone. And one of the big questions on election night was, which approach was more favorable? All right, and we're joined now with Attorney General-elect Doug Boylan. Thanks for joining us, Doug, and congratulations. Thank you, Nestor. All right, let's start with that. Um, you know, I, we just ran a package on um, the um, drug or ice crisis that have been, has been plaguing the island for so many years. Uh, this goes back to, uh, as you know, uh, the early 90s. So um, what is your strategy? Because this is one of the top concerns of the electorate. What is your strategy? And I know that as attorney general, you're only one piece of the puzzle in addition to the you know, customs and the police and the courts and, uh, and the port and the Guam Behavioral, Behavioral Wealth uh, Health um, uh, Department and also the feds, I mean, the DEA and, and, and you know, the US attorney. And only you're only one cog, but, but do you have a strategy going in to address this crisis? Yes, we do. We know that uh, obviously the distributors and the dealers are the ones that usually are punished greater in our Guam law by the legislature. Then we have the uh, actual addicts, the people that are using it. So because the price has gone down, we're getting many more addicts. And it's also an indicator that obviously they're either making it on Guam or they're getting in through a source that the customs uh, and maybe the feds to the post office uh, aren't sufficiently uh, curtailing. I think... Um, if we can get the price up, you're going to get less meth users. Um, well, that's one attack, right, to reduce the supply. But uh, I will live up to my promise that those that choose to take meth 
and to possess meth, which are both felonies that uh, pursuant to the Guam legislature statutes that they will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. We'll ask the juries and especially the judges to do that. The um, adult drug court is a uh, off ramp provided by the Guam legislature. And the court is also a important, you know, the word player, quote unquote, that people like to use. Um, so people that are meth users that fall within the, uh, the limited um, qualifications, eligibility requirements uh, will be given that ADC option, but I will guarantee them if they do not successfully complete that program, they will be taken before the judges and the juries in order to convict them and to keep them in jail. Uh, the legislature was very uh, gracious to provide ADC one and ADC two type courts. Now working hand in hand with the Guam Police Department and the Guam Customs uh, locally, and then working with the DEA, the Department of Justice and the FBI to uh, see what federal resources can be gotten, especially against the distributors and the, uh, the dealers. The federal court is um, uniquely uh, geared and uh, carries much weight and strength with it uh, to go after the dealers as we see in the newspapers every day. So I expect to be meeting uh, very closely and, and staying in close communication with these two um, local and federal actual law enforcement. The, um, also to work with the governor and the chief of police and all the customs and as well as the feds to uh, create the uh, task force. You know, the, the word task force is very bureaucratic in, in sounding, but what the intent is, is to actually arrest to detect arrest and then to bring before our judges and juries, whether it's gonna be local courts or federal courts. Um, that is the way that we're gonna create the deterrence and to stop the, in, uh, the um, importation and the actual use of drugs. It's, it's many prongs approach. And the team that I'm assembling right now uh, will be uniquely geared towards uh, hitting that drug abuse problem because that is the source of many of the other problems we're seeing on Guam. And it even goes down to the children our kids, they're being abused at the homes of drug addicts, whether it's one or both parents, spouses are being abused, the manamco that may be in that household. Everybody that's associated with the drug user is being hurt. And I'm going back to the basics. None of the therapy, you're not gonna hear any therapy coming out of the AG's office. That's another department, whether it's gonna be a Guam Behavioral Health, the governor, the private um, types of new beginnings and so forth, as well as DOC, you know, I, but I am for, getting them the, the RSAT, the uh, programs within the Department of Corrections. Because once you put them in there, uh, you know, try to help them, but put them and isolate them and protect the public. That's the key, not to punish the people, but to protect our public. I think that is the, sums it up for most people. They just wanna live safely. Plus, you know, Nestor, as you are well aware, tourism is one half of our economy on Guam. Our quality of life is based upon tourism spending and military spending. If we become known as the uh, drug capital of the Pacific, our numbers are going to fall off. I think there was some good news uh, recently. Uh, maybe Governor Gutierrez has a lot to be uh, thanked for that, that the uh, Guam is number four. I think destination, we're above um, Paris and a few other, other big names out there. So we do not want our tourists being attacked, uh, robbed uh, by these meth addicts so that they can get their, their fix. Well, what do you think has been the reason this has persisted so long. We were talking earlier about how this has been around since the early 90s. Um, I'll give you some extreme examples. How, and, and Guam's not the only place, of course. Hawaii and, and throughout Southeast Asia has had this ice uh, epidemic. And I'll give you an example of an extreme way of dealing with it um, here in the Philippines. Um, Rodrigo Duterte became president on the yeah. crest of his you know, uh, plan to, to fight um, the ice uh, epidemic in, in the country. And um, he went as far as saying, you know, um, I'll, I'll, I'll kill these drug addicts. And right. the people said, yeah, and voted yeah. him in. I, I, I don't think Guam would ever reach even close to that extreme. But how are we going to put an end to this at least, or at least bring some kind of um, solution that we can minimize its impact because it is hurting our islands so badly? And Nestor, you're raising a national problem, right? We're seeing this in almost every state of the United States, but you're seeing the reduction in the states and you know, sad to say, but those red states they talk about where they're taking that hard notice approach, no rehabilitation, you punish the people. And on Guam, what we need to do is increase the price of drugs. Like you mentioned the nineties, this has been around for decades, right? Whether you're talking about even the seventies uh, in the Vietnam war, you had uh, heroin. That was a big problem on Guam. You had murders uh, drug related. 
but the amount of the price of a gram has gotten so low that even the Micronesian community, which are, are immigrants, and usually they have less uh, resources, uh, you know, endemic to any immigrant, they can buy five tokes of a, uh, uh, the meth for $10. It's $100 a gram now, which is ridiculously low. You can get a, either a six pack of beer or five tokes and get the same effect of getting high, but the meth will cause you to go into a, some form of a mental type of condition that's gonna hurt people. And so too will alcohol, but obviously we're, we're talking about the drug problem. The, uh, the focus of the AG's office is gonna to be to hit that drug world so hard that the prices will go up. You're gonna have less people that can actually afford it. And that will, by definition, you know, use the market forces sort of thing, reduce it and hopefully drive it back to those numbers that we were seeing. I, I have no qualms about it. I am not gonna be able to be 100% effective on the drug uh, world. We have to be realistic, but we have unique uh, ways of, of getting these drug addicts. We know they're coming in. They're coming in on those fishing boats. I'm, working, I'm gonna work with customs. All those skiffs out there that they're launching those boats from, they have to be monitored by the governor's people. They've gotta be, when they're uh, docking them, pulling them in with their pickup trucks uh, down in south southern areas where they're, they're set up for that, they have to be inspected with the dogs. There's people going out on the scuba. They're going outside the reef pulling them in through the scuba um, you know, type of uh, uh, interdiction, bringing it in, as well as uh, post office. We're hearing a lot of stuff coming in through the post office, as we see with the federal um, people. But we, you know, locally, we don't have jurisdiction to, to intervene in the, the postal service, but I can work with them. So whether they're making it on Guam, whether they're bringing it in through uh, not the airport or not the port authority, they're getting it into Guam and that's clear. So right. hit the market forces. All right, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back with more of our discussion with Attorney General elect Douglas Moylan right after this. All right, we're back with uh, Attorney General elect uh, Douglas Moylan. Uh, Doug, let me um, switch topics now to another um, controversial one, if you will, um, which is the abortion issue. Um, now, uh, course, you're aware that the Supreme Court earlier this year uh, kind of overturned Roe v. Wade and has returned jurisdiction over abortion back to the states. Guam has had an abortion law by Senator Bell Ariola way back when you might have been, I think, um, a um, legislative counsel or assistant Actually, legislative counsel at the, at the time. Um, so it's it, that's still on the books, but there was a, a court here, uh, a ruling that uh, um, I guess, what do you call it? Uh, um, injunction. Injunction, correct. So what is your position now that you're, you're back in the AGC? Well, Nestor, let me make no qualms about it. I do not want to be involved in this issue, the abortion issue. It uh, truly is a public policy decision of the senators. Um, and quite frankly, personally, I think that it should be only the women that vote on these issues. But being the attorney general, the people require that every law passed by the Guam legislature be enforced, and that if the AG disagrees with it, then the AG has a duty to enforce the law until such time as the courts and the AG takes it to the court for purposes of a challenge or a uh, to try to find it unconstitutional or illegal or some other form. Uh, right now, we have a dysfunction going on. The Attorney General has completely ignored that highest court in the land, which we as lawyers and we as a people must respect. The U.S. Supreme Court Dobbs decision June of this year said that Roe versus Wade is no longer good law. Leave it to the legislatures. The AG has failed to lift the injunction, which based itself upon Roe versus Wade. And the Supreme Court has said that is no longer good law. So being the attorney general, I have to make sure that the laws passed by the Guam legislature are duly enacted and enforced. The governor and the attorney general through the executive branch have that duty and is a separation of powers function. If there's a disagreement like was done in 1990 between Joe Atta and uh, that uh, uh, civil rights organization, ACLU maybe. ACLU, yeah. Right, that that would go before the courts. That was the procedure. So I foresee we going into court, and I know there's a little bit of drama going on with Anita Ariola and so forth and her, her positions, but the, the people of Guam, government of Guam has a duty to make sure that the legislature's law in 1990 comes back into effect. And if, uh, the ACLU or whoever else wants to challenge it, that's their business. They can do that, but the courts will have to decide. 
It's a respect for our system of government, the rule of law and the balance of powers. We all want the legislature's laws to be enforced. And that's my duty. So, so in layman's term, Doug, what would be the net effect of you going before the court and saying, you know, I, I, I wash my hands of this? Would the abortion law then uh, be in effect or would there yes. still be? The only the only impediment to our abortion, our 1990 abortion law that was sponsored by Bell Areola was that an injunction was placed based upon Roe versus Wade. And I believe the other case at the time that is no longer good law. The legislature never repealed public. I think it's uh, 20 134. Um, so as in other states, this occurred, go back in the court, make the, give the, the candor and respect to the judge that issued the injunction to let them know that our highest court has now said that the injunction is no longer appropriate. So once it's lifted, it would come into effect. But the beauty of that law, Nestor, it requires a referendum. It requires that the question not remain the law of Guam, but that it be given to the uh, voters in a general election to vote on whether or not they wish to have the abortion issue. It was a beautifully crafted law. Um, the late Bell Areola, Senator Bell Areola uh, and her colleagues at the time, which I think there may have been 21 senators at that time, you know, they, they saw the, the, um, the, the infinite justice that occurs when you give it to the people. It's almost uh, inherent in what the US Supreme Court said, give it back to each jurisdiction for them to decide. Guam was ahead of its time. It said, give it back literally through a referendum to the people, not 15 senators, not 21 senators, but let the people decide. Okay, and so uh, just, just to be crystal clear on this, um, once that happens, then, um, then a, a, abortions would at that point be absolutely illegal in Guam, including, um, what is it, tele, telemedicine abortions? That I believe that would fall. I, I don't want to uh, jump the gun on that issue because that was not around in 1990 at the time. But at the same time, it, this is the, the territory of Guam with jurisdictional issues. So if anyone is advocating an IE, a clinic, um, and violating a local law, I don't think that uh, they would be immune from the prosecution on my offhand response. We would, we would research that issue, though. Okay. Real quickly, we've got a couple of minutes before uh, we got to go take another break. But other than um, those two issues, what would be your priorities in the first 100 days as the AG? It, it would be what I had uh, promised I was going to do. It's the prosecution to keep people safe, return Guam to the safety that we all wish that we would have uh, living in our community. So that is the number one priority. All the resources of the AG's office, including the attorneys, uh, would be geared towards that. I don't care if they're a civil lawyer. Um, they will become a prosecutor as needed to make sure that um, the crimes on Guam are being fought against and the deterrent is being, uh, message is being sent out there. So that is the first priority um, and my main priority. Obviously we have legal opinions and all other things. And I've been in communication with the Lieutenant Governor. Uh, there is a need from what I'm understanding that their government agencies aren't getting the legal opinions out in a timely fashion. I will make sure that's done. Private practitioners, we do many things at one time. You're not just civil, you're not just criminal. We do both and we multitask. That's why we're paid the big bucks. So. All right. Okay, we're going to take another quick break and we'll be back with AG Elect Doug Moylan. Don't go away, anybody. Okay, and we're back. Thanks for joining us once again for The Hub. Our interview this week is with Attorney General Elect Doug Moylan. Doug, I wanted to ask you, you know, this was a very uh, contentious campaign. Um, it was not just uh, against the incumbent uh, Attorney General Levin Camacho, but we also had a write-in candidate, uh, Attorney um, Peter Santos. So it was a three-way race, and uh, you won by, as we mentioned earlier, just a, a thin razor's edge. So it couldn't, uh, it couldn't clearly be considered a mandate, if you will. But um, what is your, um, and, and I know you've talked a little bit about this before, uh, what is your, your plan to address, you know, the concerns of those who may have voted for um, Levin and, and, and Peter? I, well, Nestor, I would say that uh, because of the way that our, our democracy is structured, it is a mandate, you know, whether people like it or not. The majority of those out there of that race decided to uh, put me in based upon my promises. Um, I will reach out to every voter out there. I don't care if they're Democrat, Republican or independent and um, give them an opportunity to help us to make our island safe. I don't think anyone is against that concept. 
you know, whether they are, they think that, well, maybe we should give a little bit more rehabilitation, you know, help people out a little bit more, give them a little bit more discretion. I will, I will remind them that our senators are very active and just going over across the street to uh, the senators and asking them to change some of the laws. If they feel that the, uh, the law shouldn't be as uh, severe on meth as it is right now, then uh, please, I, by all means, go see them. If they feel that maybe there's more rehabilitation needed, we have a uh, Guam Behavioral, uh, Child Protective Services, and all the other uh, public health uh, departments in order to provide the therapy that uh, they think that's needed. But the way that the law is right now, the AG is only the chief law enforcement officer. He's not the, uh, the chief social worker or anything dealing with non-law enforcement uh, duties in my view of that office. And that's, that's how I was elected. I'm just hoping that those people that, that uh, were either didn't come out and vote, because we have 56 percent um, um, a voting uh, percentage right now, which was very low, one of the lowest in Guam's history again. So in that respect, I, I need to get more people to understand everybody has to be a crime fighter. When you see, like, my goodness, look at that Manila. They, they took that, that uh, maybe a thousand pound um, chili uh, thing out of Manila. And I heard Mrs. Tolan, they, they took one of her cannons, which is at least a ton probably. People are stealing from our front yards um, and I think everybody agrees we need to stop this. My approach will be different. It'll be, uh, you know, content based and performance based. So um, I, I appeal out to those people that may not have voted for me or those people that did not vote at all to give me the opportunity and my team the ability to help to, to protect them, their families and everyone around us. It'll make for a better Guam. We all know that you, you follow the law. Everybody's happy. And do you think that that, that crime was, you know, um, the, the top issue that, that drove this election? I know um, there's also, you know, concerns over the high cost of living. But, you know, um, in, in talking to people, those were by far the two. And, the, and uh, crime and, and the high cost of living. And, and as we talked about earlier, you know, you're, you're one cogging that. But, you know, a very important cog, obviously, because you run the, you, the, the largest legal office in, on the island. And you're a top law, law enforcement right. officer. Right. The chief law enforcement officer brings in all other law enforcement officers, and it's, it culminates with who goes to the courts. The courts, in my opinion, are the most capable and uh, to, to stop the crime problem. And uh, I'll be having conversations with our judges, hopefully to convince them that this is a different and maybe a better way if you want to stop and protect people immediately, um, you know, in that respect. But uh, I make no qualms about it. It's going to be hard work uh, trying to fight Guam's problem. It was a very, it was on every debate that we had among the candidates and uh, the people wanted to hear our political platforms. And that's what democracy is about. Once you're elected, you have a duty to the public to do what you promised. And that's what I, I did that back in 2002. I'm going to do it again. You've got violent, nonviolent and government corruption cases. The uh, three of them are going to be a part of the whole um, effort that we're going to have, but definitely the violent crimes. And that's meth driven. A lot of them are just meth driven, drug driven. So, yeah. What, what uh, changes have you seen in the uh, criminal activity um, since you last held that office? I think most people would would say that the amount of violent crime, I mean, the brazen violent crime where yeah. they're, you know, they're going into your homes at night when you're still there, you know, that sort yeah. of thing has changed uh, um, from, you know, the, the years back. Yes, I've been also practicing as a defense attorney for years, and we see it, and I've talked to other defense lawyers on many issues, and it's the drugs. The, the meth destroys everything about a person, from your teeth falling out to your organs beginning to fail. I've had clients that have literally died from overdoses or suicides, meth-related. Um, people, once you start that meth, it takes over everything about you, especially the, the uh, violence and the child abuse. You've got the legislature looking at taking kids away from the parents. I wouldn't even go that far to take a, a child away from their parent. But the legislature is dealing with these issues now. And that's just addressing a part of what the real problem is. And, you know, Judge Ingalls in the family court, she spends tireless days trying to deal with all these uh, these juvenile cases, the child protective services and the, the teachers when they have to take the kids away from their parents because their parents are leaving the kids. Um, by themselves, uh, un, un, not taking care of, and I'm talking from um, infant all the way up to, you know, 15, 16, whatever, on these kids. Uh, you'd, you'd cry if you saw the, the police reports and the photos um, in the jungles when they go out and they find these, these parents 
Both of them are meth addicted. They're sleeping off the day while their kids are just running around, even with weapons. You know, kids are being told, shoot anyone that comes around. You know, it's really, it's bad out there, um, Nestor. And that's why we need to address it very, um, with a lot of force and, um, you know, meet the drugs with what it's doing to our community forcefully. Yeah. I wanted to talk about the, uh, the position itself. I know um, as far as the election commission is concerned, it's a nonpartisan position, but for all intents and purposes, you know, attorney generals across the United States, they run as politicians. And by, yes. by definition, you're running for an elected office. Therefore, it is a political position. Um, how do you view um, the AG's role, um, especially with regard to um, the politics of it? Will you be able to work well with the administration, for example? I am going to be setting up a, a meeting. I don't want to, you know, this is like you, I tell the governor on the, the media, that's what I'm going to do. I've already, uh, in, I'm already in communication with the lieutenant governor. I look forward to meeting the governor. Um, there's obviously a lot of things that I have to take care of before January 2nd, uh, including my private practice. But I mean, um, I need to work with the governor. The governor is the elected representative of all of us out there. Um, I respect that. Um, I've been in this position before. I have uh, recognize the problems that can occur. And quite frankly, if you look through every attorney general in the United States, they're always having problems with their governor. You know what I mean? It's just one of those positions where who's, who's driving the ship? Um, I don't want to take that position. I want to work honestly and um, very candidly with, uh, with Lou Leon Guerrero. She is the People's Choices governor. And I will work with as many government officials that I can work with in order to do what I promised. And that is primarily to protect us. The governor, I'm sure, wants to do the same thing. That's why I'm going to be speaking with the chief of police and all, and including the governor and lieutenant governor. Let's put together a task force. I don't care what you call it. Let's not make it political. Let's just make it so that when the people need the help, we're going to be able to provide it effectively because I cannot do this alone. I need the cooperation of the chief of police and customs to help get those cases to us and to put together good cases so that we can actually get them through any motions to dismiss or whatever else uh, the defense attorney may try to bring. Um, so, you know, Nestor, it's both in court and out of court. I want to work with, I got a lot of ideas that I can uh, sit down with uh, Chief Ignacio and uh, kind of go over and throw it at him and just say, hey, what do you think about this? I don't want to litigate stuff. It takes too much time, Nestor. The, the resources, the headaches, the defense lawyers, um, by the time that you get into the, the jury, you know, you may be running for your next election. And, and, and on the side here, I want to ask the legislature for a speedy trial right for the people of Guam. We know the defendants can go to trial within 45 days if they're incarcerated, 60 days if they're free. I want the AG to have the mirror type right that if we've got the victim and the case set up, Your Honor, we want to go to trial before a jury uh, and bring quick justice. We need that. Guam doesn't have it right now. All right. We're going to take one last break. We'll, we'll be back to close out the show with Attorney General-elect Doug Marlin. Stay with us. All right, we're back to close out the show. Doug, we've got about a minute or so left. I wanna give you one opportunity to, a last opportunity rather, to just address the, the public and tell them what they can expect from Attorney General Douglas Moreland in a second term. Thank you, Nestor. Again, I thank everybody that voted for me. I thank those that supported me. And I appeal to those that, Republicans, Democrats, and independents to give us the chance. You, you do. This is the first time in Guam's history that you've had an elected attorney general come back for a second term. Um, the, a lot of the things that I learned in the first term, the unfinished business that I hope to um, fulfill, um, and the good is the, the good to the public is my main standard. And I'll be asking everybody in that office, are we really doing a good thing for the public? But that's what I hope, uh, Nestor. Four years is a long time, and I expect to get a lot of good work done. All right. So attorney General-elect Douglas Mullen, who will be sworn in on January 2nd uh, as the next attorney general of Guam. Thanks for joining us, Doug, for, and appreciate your time. You too, Nestor. Thank you. All right. I'm Nestor LeConte. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, we'll see you again next week on The Hub.